Hi guys. So in this lesson, we're going to just do a little mini unit on statistics and data analysis just to kind of wrap things up for the year. Um, this can be a helpful thing just to get those math conversations going over the summer. There's probably going to be many opportunities to analyze some data in real life. And so um, let's take a look at some tools that you can use to, to analyze data. The tool that we're really going to look at today is scatter plots and lines of best fit. Um, you use this when you have access to a bunch of raw data and you want to see if that data is related to each other in any way. So we'll take a look at this first just by analyzing energy usage in the United States. So you're welcome to look through the slide presentation. I'll highlight a few slides from it as I go. Um, you are no means obligated to understand the whole thing. You all know there are many sources of electric power in the United States and over the years our reliance on different sources of energy has varied widely. So our question is, is there a relationship between our reliance on coal energy and our reliance on wind energy? And if you think about that question, over the years, um, our, our usage of coal has gone up and down. Um, our usage on nuclear has gone up and down. Our, our usage of hydro has gone up and down. And our usage of, of wind has gone up and down. So what's the general trend with coal and the general trend with wind? And do they have anything to do with each other? So we can understand this by taking a look at some data. So this spreadsheet might look a little confusing at first, but the whole point of statistics is to pull trends out of confusing sets of numbers. Um, so as I look at this spreadsheet, I see there are there's a year over here. So this um, data has to do with February in each of these years. And this is the total US energy um, usage in thousands of megawatt hours every February from 2018 going back to 2001, it's in reverse chronological order. This is the amount of that energy that was um, coal generated, the amount that was wind generated, the percent that was coal generated, and the percent that was wind generated. So if I wanna answer my question about our, how are the use of coal and the use of wind related to each other, I'm gonna pick out a couple of these columns to make a scatter plot against each other. Now, when you make a scatter plot, you have to pick data that um, it comes in pairs. So the coal for this year um, is matched with the wind usage for this year. They go together because they come from the same year. And um, I can also see matched points for every other year. When you plot them, you put one of those on the x-axis and one of those on the y-axis, and you make a dot for every year. Um, so of course, technology can do that for us. So the way I make a scatter plot in Google Sheets is like this. You'll need this instructions. We click on this column, D, and I'm going to hold down control and click on column F. Okay. And now that I've got both columns selected, I'm going to do insert and do chart. Google Sheets never puts in the correct type of chart the first time. This is not a good chart. We're going to make this a scatter plot. So I'll scroll up here and there's a box that says chart type. I'll pull that down and I'm going to find a scatter plot. Now, when it first made the scatter plot, I'm moving the webcam window so I can see this, it made the scatter plot incorrectly. So I need to, I need to tweak it a little bit. What I should have here is the X axis should be one of my columns and the series should be the other. So I'm going to click on add X axis and it's got these two sets of data that I already selected. So I'll just choose coal as a percent of total as my X axis. But then I don't want coal as my percent of total to be a series. I'm only going to have wind be the series. So one of my columns is X axis. One of my columns is series. Now this is a proper scatter plot. Every one of these dots represents one year. And I would go along until I find the percentage of coal that was used that year and I would go up to find the percentage of wind energy that was generated that year. Um, if, I wanted to be, if I wanted to be a little clearer about that data, you can add labels, this is optional. To add a label, I go to the series area and click on these three dots and pull it down and say add labels. And then I don't want the label to be the default, they always screw it up. Click on that thing that says label and then you're gonna click on this little box that says select a data range. And then I'm going to choose for my data range highlight all of those and get rid of it. And then um, I'm gonna choose the year as the data labels. So I start here in row A1 and drag down all the years and um, click OK. And now what that does is it puts down what year goes with what data point, just if it's helpful for you to see what year it matched up. 
So then I can see in 2001, well over half of the energy generated was generated by coal and a very small portion was generated by wind. But then if I look at this year here, which the label is hiding because it's like off the page, um, or this year here, which is 2016, less than 30% of the energy was generated by coal and then a little over 6% was generated by wind. There seems to be a downward trend, like the more coal that's used, the less wind is used. And the more wind is used, the less coal is used. So these two things are negatively correlated with each other. Um, just a brief rundown of some vocabulary here. When you make a scatter plot, um, one thing you should pay attention to is whether the data seems to follow along a general linear trend. For example, this scatter plot that shows up here does seem to have a pattern, but it's clearly not linear. It goes down and then goes back up again. So you can't model this with a line of best fit. It's a decent scatter plot, and there is does seem to be a pattern, but it's not a linear match. Um, these two graphs seem to be better candidates for a linear um, trend. This one's a very close linear fit, and this one is a little messy, a little steep, but still linear. Um, there's a positive correlation and a negative correlation. A positive correlation means that, that as one variable goes up, the other goes up. And a negative correlation means that as one variable goes down, the other goes down. You can see that they match with like positive slope and negative slope on a line. Um, now, one thing that statisticians will do is they'll make a line of best fit that goes through the data as best as possible, minimizing the distance that those points are off the line. And um, then they do some math on that line of best fit to find out how closely that data matches a linear trend. And that number that shows you how closely that data matches a linear trend is called R squared. R squared is a really useful um, statistical value just to show you how tightly the correlation matches. Um, in order to get a line of best fit in R squared, there's a whole bunch of math you have to do. The math is explained on these slides. It's super complicated. The one thing I do want to highlight is there's this Greek letter sigma, which means sum. So whenever you see that Greek letter sigma, that means you add up all of these values. So in order to calculate the line of best fit in R squared, you have to add up all of the x values, you add up all of the y values, you add up the products of all the x and y values, you add up all of the squares of the x values, and you plug them into these formulas to get the slope and y-intercept of your line of best fit. And then you can plot that line of best fit as shown on this slide. And the line of best fit is meant to work so that some of the points are above it, some of the points are below it, but the overall distance between the points and the line is minimized. Um, you will never calculate a line of best fit manually. You'll always have technology do it for you, but those slides show you the general process. Um, then, after you do a line of best fit, there's a value called R squared. And R squared is calculated by looking to see, um, let me go back to this slide here, looking to see the distance between every point and the line. You square that distance, and then you plug it into a formula that um, calibrates it between a value from 0 to 1. If your R squared value is 1, your line is a perfect linear fit. There's no data that's off the line at all. If it's really close to 1, then your data is like a little bit off the line, but it's an excellent linear fit. If your R squared is close to 0, it shows that your data is really messy and it doesn't match the line very closely at all, and it's not a very good correlation. Um, what's a good R squared value? Um, an R squared value that's good um, is... Let's see, I'll go to the slide in a minute. An R squared value that's good is generally, it depends on your application. Um, if you're like a social scientist, some social scientists think like of an R squared value of 0.25 is decent. So like if you were studying, you know, how much, um, a, how somebody's mood is versus how much they exercise every day, and you made a linear plot of that information, an R squared value of 0.25 might indicate there's some relationship there between mood and exercise. Um, but if you are, say, an astrophysicist and you're studying the movement of two planets and you get an R squared value of 0.25, that's not really enough um, repeatability for an astrophysicist experiment. So it just depends on your application. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a line of best fit using a spreadsheet. So I'm going to move this down here and go back over to our scatter plot. It's super easy. Once you've got your scatter plot made, you um, go down to, sorry, you go to, it's in series. You click on the box that says trend line. 
and then uh, you click down here and there's one that says show R squared. And your R squared value for this data showing uh, wind power and coal power is 0.946. That's a really strong correlation. So it's pretty clear that as coal usage goes up, wind usage goes down and vice versa. Um, one interesting way that you can explore this is, for example, in this spreadsheet, now this is a really confusing spreadsheet, but a couple of rows of interest here are, this is the percent of young people with less than a high school education, and uh, this is the median earnings for uh, um, each state. So Alaska is this row, Maine is this row, and so on down. So I might be interested in seeing if the high school dropout rate is correlated to the median earnings of a state. So again, I can click on one column, hold down control, click on the other column, do insert chart, and then um, this again made a completely wrong graph to begin with. So I'm gonna scroll up and make it be a scatter plot. And just to do those steps one more time, um, make sure the X axis is one of your columns and the series is the other column. This is going to make my data messy, but I'm going to pull down this little um, menu here and do add labels. And I'm going to click on this and click on the little grid and then drag from geographic area all the way down to the end of the states so I can see which state is which data point. Okay, and now when I scroll up, every point on my scatter plot is a different state. So it looks like generally as the number of, as the percent of people that have our high school dropouts increases, it seems that overall median income decreases, but it's not a super clear trend. But we'll go ahead and make the trend line. To do this, we go to Customize, Series, scroll down, Trend Line, scroll down, Show R Squared. So it made a trend line that minimized the distance off the trend line, and the R squared here is 0.178. So there's not a super tight correlation between the percentage of young high school dropouts and the overall median income in a state. Um, so that's if we're looking for um, answers about either high school dropout rates or median income, it's not super clear that it's there. Um, for your homework assignment, you're going to use this spreadsheet on mortality versus education level. So this is data from a set of US cities, and every city we've got two pieces of information. Mortality is the number of deaths per 100,000 people per year. So it's, it's the number of people that, that die every year per 100,000 people. Mortality is generally used as an overall snapshot of like the health of a location. Higher mortality rates means that people are unhealthy. Lower mortality rates means that people are healthier. And then education level is the average number of years of education completed by residents of that city. So um, use a scatter plot and a trend line and an R squared value to see if mortality and education are related. And then your assignment is to write like a sentence or two describing why you think that relationship does or doesn't exist. Um, so give us a little bit of information about what you think um, might be some of the possible relationships between education and mortality in a city. Um, and then for part two of your assignment, there will be another video coming up soon. So um, if you need any help with the scatter plots, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you with it.